There's another way you might want to deal with the schema that comes from the W3 org. In addition to giving you the data here, if you page on down, they actually give you a schema. And so there might be times where you have a trading partner send you their schema, and then you have to map from their schema to your schema. And we'll discuss that and we get into the mapping videos. So I'm going to copy and paste this data here for their schema. And I want to put it directly into BizTalk. So one thing with BizTalk is when you open a schema like this, you see there really is no schema editor here. So BizTalk assumes that you want to use the GUI and that you don't want to actually type in the actual schema code here. So there's one way to get around that. Let me show you. So here we'll just do a uh, right click. We'll do an add new item and we'll click schema and we'll call this, uh, let's just call it partner PO schema. And again here you can't change anything. So now that we've added it we're going to close that. And then you can come over here but, and you can still say right click open with and then this little menu will pop up and these are other tools that you can use and so by default it's going to use the BizTalk schema editor but Visual Studio itself has another schema editor built in and so when you're in a non when you are in a non BizTalk project you always have this schema editor available or you can actually go to HTML or XML editor if you want to so let's use their schema editor and click add I'm sorry not add open I think just hit OK here. Takes a minute for it to open. Now this schema editor has a GUI version and a not GUI version. And okay, to get to the uh, not GUI version, you right click anywhere in here and you say view code. So now that we see the code, we're going to do a control A to select everything and then control V and actually paste in the schema that we got from the W3Org site. So now we can close that. That, that closed the, uh, the code mode and now the GUI mode you can see here was, has been updated. And you can see the hierarchical structure just a little bit better. And one thing you can see here, it's kind of interesting how they actually have uh, the address shared. So here's an address block and then up here they have ship to is a US address and bill to is a US address. Okay, so now let's close this and now we'll open it with the BizTalk editor and make sure the BizTalk editor doesn't complain about it. So we click here the schema. And the things we want to point out here are right here. Uh, ship to, you notice it says type equals US address. So how is that type done? Over here you see a thing called data structure type in your property window and it says US address. So if you look at this list, these are what they call the complex types that, that are built into the schema we got from the W3Org site. And to see those complex types, um, we don't really see it. Yeah, here it is. So see there's no GUI equivalent to this. When you click on the US address here, there's nothing in the BizTalk GUI that will show you that. So here you have a complex type called US address. And so the point is they define the address format just once. Name, name street, city, state, zip. And then they copy that basically into the ship to and to the bill to. So this type of schema is actually kind of, I won't say impossible, but to, tricky to build with BizTalk. What, the way I would actually do this normally with BizTalk is I would create another schema in another file called US address and then I will reference it and I'll show you how to do that in one of the upcoming videos. The other thing we want to see is what other unusual things they may have done here. So I notice when I scroll to the bottom they have something here called the SKU which is probably a product I would imagine that's going to tie to our part number. So if I click here to part number See, they said here type is SKU, which is like a standard identifi identification number for parts. And so here they've actually put a regular expression on there. So it says that the first three digits have to be numeric. Then you need a dash followed by exactly two of the letters from A to Z. 
in uppercase. So this is a format. Let's actually look at their data again. So let's go open their data file here and see how their part numbers are three digits, dash, and then two alpha letters. So that is basically being enforced here by this regular expression. So now we could say let's test the sample data against the file that we copied in from their own website. So we're going to go here to properties, input instance name, right click, validate instance, and the data did validate. It says here it's OK. But I, I suppose I want to test that regular expression. Um, again, I could copy my data here, go to the top, paste it, and I want to rename it to bad data or something. I want to open it, and now I want to put an invalid part number here. So what if instead of AA that, they put uh, AA dash 2926, and maybe this one, maybe they put lowercase AA. Okay, so I'm going to grab that bad XML file name into my copy. I'm going to go back to the partner schema, go to properties, put in the bad file name here as my input instance name. And then I'm going to right click on that partner schema and I'm going to do validate instance. Uh, let's go here output. Actually let's go back to task list. Let's see what we change here. No, it doesn't show these. Um, so right here it says here, part num is invalid. The value so-and-so with two little case A's is invalid according to the data type SKU. The pattern constraint failed. So pattern here is referring to the regex, regular expression patterns. And if you've never really studied reg regex before, let me just give you a couple of quick uh, pointers. So at the bottom of this file we have this regex. There's a really good website I think it's called Regex Live, but if you just go to Google and search for Regex, um, you'll get Wikipedia, but this is the site I like right here. It's called regexlive.com. And they have a nice little page called a cheat sheet. So over here on the left, sorry, I can't find it right now. Let me just find the word cheat. There it is. Regex cheat sheet. And this will give you a summary of all the different regular expressions and how they work. And then they also have on this website a tester where you can actually test your regular expressions. So for instance, you can come here and let's go back to our biz talk. Let's copy in this regular expression right here. And that would be called your pattern. And then if you type in here like a number, a three digit number followed by two letters and hit submit, it will validate those letters against that pattern. And then you scroll down, it will tell you if it's valid or not. And it says yes, it was a match. But for instance, if I put here A123 and click submit. Well, in that case, it actually still got a match. But let's say I take out one of those numbers. See, this actually shows that their reg expression may not have been correct. So now it says no matches. So you notice when I had an extra letter in there, what they really needed to do here was, I think, say, uh, starts with and then ends with. And anyway, I'm not going to go into reg expressions any more than that for now. Just realize this website is here to help you with them. So that concludes this video where we pulled in a schema from another company and we basically put it into BizTalk using a couple of little tricks there.